I thought today I'd uh, have a little play with and think about the rooster and what sort of stuff I need to make him. Then the mind went to, oh, I wonder how we can make feathers that are a little bit different. And I was going back to the feather shaping cuts that we were doing with our stained glass and whether we could actually do these on crockery. So we would end up with basically this shape or a shape similar to this. So you can see that that would probably make an awesome chest Fantastic. for my rooster. So let's have a look at how I did that. So with the selection of the plate, I've gone for something that's got a flat wide bit. So whether that's on the underside or the top side for your pattern, I think will, pro will probably be the best choice and not too thick unless you've got the muscles of uh, mm -hmm. Hercules. So we can start on this edge here. When we were doing our slivers, we were um, making small cuts up the side. So we're going to do the same around the plate. So here I'm just putting my nippers next to the edge and squeezing. And there we have a feather. Now I'm going back over to this one here and I'm going to put this top part of the nipper next to the break. And there we have another braid feather. Then we get this sort of wavy shape. Let me just do one more. Then we get this wavy shape here. So I'm going to cut the waves off by having, by having um, this part of the wave level with this part of the wheel nipper. So you can see I've got that level in there and it's going to make a larger feather. So that'd be good for the inside, and I use the smaller feathers on the outside, as per that previous demo. So then we get this shape. Here we've got another wave. So let's chop that one off. So you can see the feathers starting to take shape already. I think that's pretty cool. And then minor adjustments, of course, once you get to shape up his chest and his belly and, and nice pointy bits for the um, bottom of his, of his chest. How much fun is this? I love pruning in the garden. This is as good. There's some nice big feathers there too. So I've gone around twice, one for this shape and one for this shape. So now we can go through and do the same thing again. It's like cutting off the crests of the wave. So this round, the shapes are a little more haphazard, but I wouldn't worry about it because you will need to fine tune some as you cut and slide them in. So we're getting a... Now I have a lovely bowl of, of feathers. And because of the nature of this particular bit of crockery, I think it would tumble well because right. it's very So I'm going to chuck these into the tumbler and see how I go with those. I put these ones on the tumbler for 30 minutes, just water. Um, and it's pretty good. Um, I'll see if I can get that nice, nicely focused. There's a little weeny bit of chipping around the edges, but you'd have to look really hard to see it. And uh, really no scratching on this one. So the test has worked out really quite well. Um, I think I probably, with the remaining batches, I'm just going to do it for 20 minutes to see if there's less chipping. You can see there's a chip there. And then it, you, you'll be able to cut those off or, or, or do something to repair that quite easily and still have a usable piece, but certainly nice and safe. With my sample bowl where I've chopped it all off, I can just turn this over because it's a lovely, clean, crisp, white curve here and I can cut those off and make lovely petals. And I've never become so interested in the bottom of plates since I started chopping them up for mosaics. Isn't that wonderful?